Zoe, Zoe Tucker, my co-teacher, we're here. What a hi, fun day. What a fun Zoom we have in store. I'm so excited to be here. Do you know this is, I think, our tenth. This is our tenth season. It is. It's not our tenth year. Okay. It's our tenth season not because we've run it twice some years. And that's okay. Good fact. So British yeah. Jenny's in the house. People type in in the chat, pop up the chat, and type in where you are. You know, Becky told me today, I said, Becky, how many people have we taught? We've taught over 2,500 students. 2,500 students. Hello from Buenos Aires in Burlington, Vermont, and Netherlands, UK, Portland. Um, Kim, would you pop up the chart while we're assembling people? And I will introduce us in the meantime. Oh, thank you, Ahana. Oh, Adam. Hey, Adam. Oh. Erica, my artist. Make, uh, if you can't see the poll, press escape, and maybe it's behind the big screen. Hello, Sophie from Brooklyn and Sabrina from West Midlands. Uh, hey, Becky's in the house. That's good. Well, I'm Lilla. I'm an art agent, and I've been an art agent for three decades. Before that, I was a busy illustrator in New York. And I primarily take students almost exclusively from the maths classes. And some of you are here today. Let me introduce my fabulous co-host and buddy, Zoe Tucker. Hi. Brilliant, brilliant and fun co-teacher, art director, and author. Zoe Tucker is art director and author of six children's books. She's written. That's what an author does. With over 20 years of experience, she's worked on quite literally hundreds of books from baby books right up to young adult. Her main passion is for picture books and narrative storytelling. How lucky are we to have this expertise? And I want to tell you something. Newsflash. Not only do you have me looking for artists in the course, in the gallery, thank you, Talia, but Zoe has assigned entire picture books from this class many times, and she's still on the hunt. And we have Tracy Shaw, who is a fantastic art director at, is it Little Brown, Kim? I think Little Brown. Yes, Little Brown. Little Brown. Senior art director. And she will not only be interviewed in this course, and we have a bunch of new people that are being interviewed in this course to freshen it up, and the text will freshen it up. But Tracy Shaw will be doing a review with us on one of the weeks. So that means she will be looking at your art in the gallery, and she will probably find people she wants to assign. No problem. I'm so excited about that. That's going to be brilliant. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that before. Let's we have again. not. I love it. I okay. just have an important memo, Lilla, which is that Greg, class captain Greg, is uh, under the name of Phil D'Angelo on the chat, just in case. Oh, that you missed that. that that was Greg. <laughs> oh, Phil D'Angelo. Anyone who doesn't know Greg, Greg is fundamental uh, in the chat. He always has great comments, keeps us on track. He's the class humorist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a question for you, my dear. You know, we've been doing this a long time, and, and I was thinking today, why do I, I only want to do what I love, okay? So I want to ask you, why do you teach this class? Do you still love teaching it? Does I'm it have so, to you? I'm so glad you asked, because... I mean, like we say, this is the 10th time we've, we've run it. And I feel like, uh, you know, I have a busy day job. And when this comes up in the calendar, it's actually one of the highlights for me of the year because I'm always, as you say, I'm always looking for artists. I'm always looking to assign. And probably the best bit of my job is when you find that brand new person, that brand new talent, and you assign them to a project and you help them get on their way. And then you end up seeing their book out there in the world, in the shops, in the hands of kids doing the job it's supposed to do. 
that for me is the very best bit of my job. And so when we're in this space, when we're teaching and when we get to be working with the students, I feel as though uh, I am always in awe of what they offer us. And I'm always surprised. Everyone in the class produces different work. That always really surprises me because we've got the same three texts. Everyone's personality comes out. And I always feel so humbled by the amount of work they do. And I'm constantly learning from the students too. So all in all, it's the most enriching part of my job, I'd say. Wow. Wow. That's really wonderful to hear. That's but really it's true. And I've assigned many books from this course. So uh, yeah, you're all making my job a lot, a lot easier. That's beautiful. Okay. So I don't know if you saw so I'm sitting with my coffee this morning, my journal, savoring that early morning and thinking, why the heck am I doing this? Why do I do this? Why does this have meaning? Of course, mm. I love teaching maths. I live for my maths classes. I absolutely love it. But I'm going to. So I reflected, I'm going to share the screen. And this is what I came up with. Well, we live, before I share the screen, I want to say this. You're sensitive people, you're gentle people, you're spiritual, you're evolved, you're beautiful souls. I know that as creative people and my students, you're beautiful. And we live in a time where there's judgy language, hateful language, lack of empathy. So what does this have to do with picture books? You know, I'm not going to give my spiel again. I've talked about how picture books are one of the biggest biggest progressive change agents in our culture with diversity, LGBTQ, progressiveness, disabilities, different abilities, race, shape, everything. Okay, I'm sure I'm leaving out some things, but that's not even what I want to talk to you about. What, occur what came to me is that, is this. Now I will pop this baby up. To commit to your art, to value your own gifts is to be a role model as a beautiful way to be human. What you're doing is the very act of you developing your art, your full potential is a political act. You show others a way to be that to commit to your talent, to work hard, to value your gifts, you're a role model. And that's why I teach this course because it's important to me to help you fully, fully realize who you are. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Susan. We all have a light to shine. That's right, Rebecca. And when you make a living as a creative person, think of what you're doing to the world. Think of what light you're bringing. And you're saying, there's a better way to be. High road. High road. Okay. That's my little spiel. So now we're going to pop up the PowerPoint because we are, I'm, I'm doing a lot of pop-ups today and we're giving away a free class at the end with our mm. little silly contest. So PowerPoint, where are you? Uh, oh, here. <laughs> I have so many things. Okay, people. Okay, PowerPoint. So class starts Monday. You've got to be there. It's one of our most popular classes. 2,500 students we've taught. So uh, this is a book by my artist, Osa Galand. Just so beautiful. Here's what we're going to do today. Zoe, would you read these? Yes. So we are going to do, we're going to look at some top work from last year's students. We're going to talk about how to illustrate a text or so how to get started well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the text. I understand, I mean, Kashani has already said in the chat that the texts are good. Thank you, Kashani. But um, I assume the classroom is open so people can read some of them if you've signed up already. And we'll also uh, talk about the text chooser, which is a lovely document that kind of helps you. It's really fun, helps you find your way with the text. Uh, we're going to look at some favorite picture books and why. What I look for in art. We're going to workshop a piece of the text. And then we've got a free three page character development worksheet for you. We'll tell you about the course, answer any questions, and then we'll give you a giveaway free class. Thank you, Zoe. You're it's welcome. Nice. 
when she reads it. <laughs> Top picks from previous class. I thought it would be really nice for you to see like what kind of work comes out of here. Let me warn you, it's incredible. And you may not be at this level, but these people were not at this level at some point in their lives, but they took courses, they worked hard, and they got to this level. It is doable. Okay, does everybody feel better? I want you to be self-kind. So here we, we're not even going to review. We're just going to look at the beauty uh, and all this gorgeous. Some of you, do you remember these pieces? Look at this. That last one was Jackie... Langeland, remember that one, Zoe? Yes. And Amy Rowe. There were so many. When I went to pick, I just had to be like ruthless. I was just like grabbing Bronte Rose. Remember this one? What a world. Mm. So much. And I want you to see different styles. Jen Girardi, I bet Jen is in the house. What did I say, Jen? Uh, so many different ways of working and drawing and painting. This with this fabulous witty face. Um, Janelle Warren. Am I going too fast? Jean no, it's great. Oh, Adam says it's nostalgic. It really is. Isn't it? Yeah, it's and so nice. And mm -hmm. you remember the story, that lightning bug story, man. Mm -hmm. Zoe, Zoe writes the stories every time. Katie Vernon. Laura Ramos. Oh, my God. Lightning bug. Aren't they beautiful, Ashwara? Yeah. Poppy K, different styles, something Great. for everyone. Mm. Sarah Heinrichs, you're also going to be studying with top talent. Why is that good for you if you are not there yet? Because I want you to be exposed to go, oh, look how she laid out the page. I could do that something in my own way, not copying next time, how she is the river and then this little scenes, you know, you're going to be, yes, Kashani, it elevates us automatically. Thank you, Robin, super inspiring. You want to take the Harvard or Oxford course in the world. I'm saying that I don't. You know, of course, they're my courses. So I think they're the talent is just phenomenal. I'll leave it at that. Eureka Halvox. You know, you may say, oh, look how she is. This tree in the foreground. I never thought of doing that. Little house in the background. So it's going to give you inspiration. Thank you, Neela says, I always do better when surrounded by inspiration. Adam, boop, boop. Adam look at What's you. That? <laughs> These students got agents from classwork. I always say I was going to take on Adam, but I think we had just taken on somebody or whatever. But now he is an agent, so I'm happy. And we took on Faye Ford from class. We took on a number of students, and we're really happy about that. What I want everybody to do right now is let's fill this out together. And I actually filled this out in my head earlier today. Um, I blank. You can type it in the chat. Phil D'Angelo. I Phil D'Angelo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I want to illustrate children's books because I like to draw maybe beautiful scenes or mm -hmm. draw and paint in watercolor or I love making frog characters or I just like making pictures. There's no right or wrong. I, Talia, want to illustrate children's books because I love to draw animals with pencils. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And make scenes that are and have children read them and feel. You do not have to obey this and fill this out exactly. You just can riff and put whatever you want. Oh, Phil D'Angelo. Adam is also a prolific sharer of experiences. Ah. And Talia says, and make scenes that are bold and bright and strong. I want to see some more people fill in. And if you're done, here's a beautiful testimony. I love that from Erica. I love creating pictures that children can feel connected to. And for me, that's like gold because we all will talk a lot about characters on the page and how they have to um, express an emotion and feeling that the child, the reader can relate to. And that's what this course is built on, is trying to get that kind of work 
um, in your portfolios for people like me. Well put. I want to say too, do you know Zoe's worked on award-winning books with some of the most talented authors, work, illustrators working today? Just say, just putting that out there. Um, she's British, so she wouldn't brag. <laughs> but I brag. came dressed for France, as we've discussed. Yes. <laughs> oh, let's read Zoe. Pick out some more of these beautiful things. Okay. Um... I, Ashley, want to illustrate children's books because I want to bring more magic and hope into the world. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I want to illustrate stories about fantastical characters and playful themes and something that brings a child and family together in joy. I want children to feel safe and seen. Ashley, that's beautiful. That's so pretty. So good. I, Cory, want to illustrate children's books because I like to draw sweet monsters. I love it. And illustrate stories about courage and make scenes that will stay in the heart and minds of children. These are beautiful. Can I say, do you know what I love about these, Zoe? I'm just privately, I'm going to say this just to you. I think <laughs> anyone can hear me. This is why I love these Zooms. I love our people. This like so our people. Okay, read some more. Hi, Kim. It's our Kim. Our Kim. If I, Kim, want to illustrate children's books because I want to reflect the diversity of the real world. Oh, that is on point. And have children see themselves reflected in the stories they read. Kim, I know you've been sharing a lot about the banned books and that's uh, gold. Please keep sharing. I, Joanna, want to illustrate children's books because I like to draw animals and nature and illustrate stories about our beautiful world and make scenes that are warm and peaceful and have mm. children read them and feel inspired. I love, I love all of this, guys. It's so positive and hopeful. And we do a lot in the class that's about not just the characterization, but there's also about putting those characters into a world. And those worlds, you need your imagination to create those worlds. And you want those worlds to be inspiring and aspirational. So I'm excited to read these, these ideas. These are so good. I saved the chat. Kim, will you? I think we saved the chat at the end, right? So I want to read each and every one of these at the end. Okay. Is this course for you? Yes. You, yes. <laughs> okay. The end. See you later. Sign up. Bye. Okay. See you. Bye now. No, don't forget. We have a giveaway at the end. Is this course for you? Do you ever wish you had a picture book illustration career getting paid for illustrating picture books? I made my living drawing pictures, paying my rent, buying my car, my food, everything as an illustrator it can be done it is done and it's a beautiful thing and it's a great lifestyle are you obsessed with picture books or illustrating or making pictures do you ever wonder if you're good at kid book illustrating and want to give it a shot and get and try and see like hey can i do this and finally do you feel that your cool imaginative brain is your secret power yeah it is it is, it is, and we'll help you be more creative. Zoe, you want to read these? Please. I feel like they're from you, but I will read them. Do you know that Lilla primarily takes on artists oh. who have strong character book illustration work, uh, children's illustration book work? I've changed the sentence entirely in their Thank portfolio. You. Do you want to know what you need in your portfolio to get a kid book work? And do you know that one of the hottest markets is picture book writing and illustration and that Lilla's agency, not mine, assigns picture book work regularly to people like me? That's oh, good. Good. Thank you. That's good. And that's how we roll, people. Okay. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> editing on the spot. OK, Zoe, I have a question for you. Yes. Art director par excellence. What do you look for in an artist's work? So you're going to be seeing all these images, you know, you're going to see all this work in class. And how did it help what you need to see? How did that help um, shape what you wanted to put in the course? So what should people show in their pitch in their portfolio to get a kid book illustration gig? Oh, and showing picture books to illustrate oh. this point. <laughs> okay. I've got my stack of picture books here. So I think fundamentally, the number one thing is you've got to have characters in your portfolio. So let's look at these two guys. Have I got that framed up? Yeah. Pull it back and just pull it closer to you, Zoe. There you go. 
to this is, this is Alex and McKinney. Back a little more. Perfect. Beautiful. And so what we're talking about is the character design of these two guys. We're talking mm -hmm. about the expressions on the characters and then how the two characters relate to each other. That's so so we've it's very Did you cute. assign that one? Yes. These are, are you my books that I've worked on. So the artist here is Alice McKinley. Will you open it for us? I love those characters. I love those. Can you see this? Yes. That is so <laughs> that basically is so the uh, the whole point of this story is that you have this frog. He comes along and he says, This rock is mine. <laughs> Okay, and he thinks it's his. But then along comes another frog who says, mm -mm, this rock is mine. Ooh. So they, you've got both frogs want it, but which of them will get it? And so it's like a funny quarrel and it demanded so much great expressive body language between the two characters. And this is what we will be working on in the class. We'll help you design your characters to start with and then bring that animation emotion and physical dexterity to get them to move across the page so i've got another one for you lilla this is just recently come out this is one of lilla's artists but also a student from class this is tisha lee and it's written by barry timms it's the second one in a series from both of them and we also in the class you have three texts which we'll talk about in a minute i'm sure but if you want to illustrate a thing, like a cup, we have a thing text, we have an animal based text and we have people. And honestly, if you can learn to do people with emotion, expression, with this like warm tenderness here that she's got, you are onto such a winner. It's, um, it's, it's not, it's hard to do, but it's not hard to do. We break it down into baby steps, but if you can put that into your portfolio, then look at these guys. Yeah. So we'll walk you through the steps of how to do that. Did I answer the question? Well, you made me in love with picture books again. <laughs> again. Wait, I've got one more then. Look, hold, look at this one. Oh my God. A damsel not in distress. Oh, very oh, wait for it, I've actually pulled this one out especially for you because I thought you would appreciate the quirkiness. She is a princess, a damsel, and she does yoga. And I know oh, I love it. we have managed to get this into the book. Uh, it's really funny, cute characters. Beautiful. Oh my God, that's so great. Um, you know what I want to know, what everybody wants to know is the three texts you wrote this year. And by the way, you get the, it, when, when you sign up, you can get the text today right now. Uh, and you go to makeartthatsells.com for everything. But what Zoe does on the text, she writes a whole children's book story. She's a published author. These are really good, okay? But what she does is she writes a number of paragraphs on the page explaining how to attack it, what to do. She gives you hints and tips. Oh, British Jenny says, and you can repeat the course afterwards with the other two texts so you create a fab portfolio. Thank you. That is so true. Okay, uh, will you give us a little synopsis of each of your three texts? Yeah, like, definitely. Just... First of all, I just want to say thanks to you um, for the lovely comments um, mm -hmm. in the chat about the texts, because uh, I do take time over writing them, Lilla. I get really, um, not precious, but I work really hard mm -hmm. to make these texts for uh, the class. And I want them to be visually rich, and um, I want them to be the sort of thing that students will read and instantly get ideas and images in your head. So it's not too complicated. You've got something you can jump into straight away. Mm -hmm. So we have three texts. And like I said to you, one is gonna be with a person as your main character. One is with animals and one is a thing. But this year, Lilla, instead of it being a cup or a pen, I'm so excited about this one. Our thing text is a ghost but it's a baby ghost. It's a ghostling. And I thought because we're going into Halloween, I don't know if we've done class over Halloween before. I thought I'd give us a bit of a spooky one. Now this ghostling is learning to be a serious ghost, um, except it keeps laughing. And every, every ghost has a human always. 
and they stay with their human for life. And this ghost has a human called Barbara. So uh, it's a little girl called Barbara. And uh, obviously I was influenced by the Barbie movie when I wrote this okay. one. But Barbara can see her ghost and she makes him laugh. And so it's this kind of cute relationship. If you are a newbie, you can just tackle the ghost. That's fine. If you are a more seasoned pro, we've got some illustrators in the house, professional illustrators in the house who are using the class to build out their portfolio. I really urge you to try and do that text with Barbara alongside and think about the relationship between them. So I've tried to make this a kind of funny uh, Halloween-esque text. The second one is called, This Is Not Part Of The Plan. And it's about an old dog called Waffle, um, who lives with his owner, Flory. That's actually my neighbor, Flory. And they have this perfect life. They do the same thing every day. It's very content. It's very mature. And then suddenly Milo appears, a tiny puppy. And it's a classic sibling story. Uh, Waffle doesn't want Milo there. Milo just wants a friend. And there's an opportunity for you to draw lots of energy, lots of action in this one as they chase and tumble and run around the house and the yard. So that will be a really fun one to get into if you want to build, put some animals into your portfolio. And then finally, the last one is based around a little girl called Erin. And I was really inspired by a artist that I follow on Instagram who posted these beautiful videos and photographs of the Lofoten, I think I probably will say that wrong, uh, the Lofoten Islands in Norway. Mm. If we've got any Norwegians with us today, please correct me. Lilla, it's the most beautiful landscape. It's very mountainous and moody, and I just felt so inspired by it. So this little girl lives in this environment, and one day she meets a bear, and it's the relationship that they have and the friendship that they build together. So beautiful, moody scenery and a powerful bear, female bear, and a beautiful character, Erin, who you could make, you can do her as a girl, but you can also explore perhaps more non-binary, um, gender fluid characterization there as well, which I cannot stress. If you can get that into your portfolio, please do, because everyone is looking for that. Yes, yes. Oh my God, I love your Sorry, story. did I waffle too long? No, no. <laughs> are you kidding? You know what? I really felt like I want to illustrate these. I won't, no. I, don't, I, I won't, but you know, you got me really wanting to, maybe I will. I don't know. By the way, don't freak out if you're new to class. Um, you don't illustrate the whole text. No, you know, no, no, Thanks, no. Willa. You will take a section. You can, but you just do a section to show off to the art director, to the agent, that you can do such a thing. Okay, I have some more questions. Can I just also mention one thing? So we have a few questions whizzing by on the okay. chat, which I can't see, I can't okay. keep up with. But if you have a question for us, there mm. is a Q&A panel. I know Eleanor and Peterson, you have your hand raised. Is that something you can, can you put your question into the Q&A and we will answer all your questions at the end? Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. I have a question. Uh, why are these great stories to illustrate for your portfolio? Well, we, one of the things I see, Lila, I'd be interested to know if you experience the same, is you might see an artist um, either present their work or maybe I see it on Instagram and I think, oh, that's lovely. And then when you actually dig into the portfolio, they maybe have only one or two characters in the portfolio. Or they maybe have the character drawn in exactly the same way with the same expression. And mm -hmm. for me, what I'm always looking for is that richness. So I'm looking for really cool style, fantastic characters, but fundamentally characters that can come to life on the page. A picture book is anything from 12 to 18 spreads long. So I need to know when I assign an artist that they can draw their characters in lots of different poses, doing lots of different things, and with lots of expression that I believe when I see it. So this course takes you through all of those steps and we give you, you work on one text for the whole of the five weeks, 
but we give you all three texts. So after the course is finished, you can go back, you can use the other two texts and it gives you what you need to fill your portfolio with that kind of stuff that I'm looking for. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so Zoe Tucker, our oh, director- questions, Lila. My goodness, oh, let me have I, some tea. I, oh, I wish I had a cup of coffee right yeah. now. I mean, uh, it's on our protocol and you just didn't do it. No. <laughs> um, so, okay, pretend I'm a student and I love all three texts. I don't know which one to choose. Can you help me <laughs> and let us, can you help me and where is? Can you help me and pop up the vital thing? And there we are. All right. Okay. Do you remember, does everybody remember the, um, I don't know if you still get them in magazines, but uh, do you remember in like Just 17 or teenage magazines where you'd find out like do, is he really into me and it would be like some pop quiz and you'd answer like 10 questions and if you got mostly a you he was definitely into you well we've kind of done something similar so you can read these different character styles and these are you are you a jester hipster are you an introvert are you a sherlock are you an adventurer we've got all these different ideas of what type of artist you might be what mediums do you like to work in what do you how you'll shine what type of text you should pick it gives a few ideas of where you might like to start and then we've given you the text that it suits so let's say for example you are miss a mr personality you have a gift for drawing characters creatures and critters you might don't mind using any medium as long as the reader can clearly see the expressions on the faces of your characters the text with lots of characters such as children or animals or even anthropomorphized items like a pencil, that's a person. Stories where the characters have loads of personalities and they interact with each other. So I think a really good one for this is this was not part of the plan because it's the, the action of the text. The dogs need to have so much expression and personality with each other. You probably can't see me, but I'm just gonna hold this a bit like these two frogs that we were looking at at the beginning. That's the sort of, you want that kind of energy in it. So let's, in contrast, let's say introvert, you love to use lots of paint to create mood. You're a deep thinker. You're a sensitive soul. Oil pastel, watercolor, gouache, etc. Any medium that creates a vibe. I think for this one, I would say Erin in the Midsummer Bear because when I wrote it, I was picturing those beautiful epic landscapes. We've got the seasons, the change of time, change of light. We go from midsummer where it's light to the darkness kind of coming in. So there's an opportunity for you to bring that kind of moody vibe through those different mediums. So hopefully this text user will give you a bit of fun to help you if you're a bit stuck. And also if you're kind of trying to choose between two or three, what I would say is don't waste time make your decision by Monday because once we begin we begin and you just don't want to spend that first week thinking you might you, you know trying to decide between the two texts just pick one do it for the five weeks see how you get on and then choose a second one after that love that thank you for that oh uh, yeah pick and stick Becky <laughs> yeah. in the chat you can click this this you get in the course but we thought, well, why don't we give it away free today so people can just kind of see if, if this feels right to them and so forth and all that. So can I say one more thing as well? Yes. Um, so I would say like as a writer, I would say I'm more naturally um, Erin and the Midsummer Bear. I'm perhaps more naturally introverted in terms of my writing. But this year, one of my personal objectives was to try to bring a little bit of humor and a bit more speech into my books. So mm -hmm. what, the reason I'm telling you this is, let's say you're an illustrator that has, wants to try a few different things. This can be your opportunity. You don't have to, um, let's say you do moody landscapes already, but you wanna try for a few weeks to push your style in a different direction and bring that energy into your characters. Go ahead and use this as a reason to try it. I love that. And as an agent, I will say, if you show, a moody, soft, sensitive style, and a and maybe one that's a little more vivid in color. 
and so forth. You don't have to have different styles. Mm. You don't have, to have like a bright graphic one and then a water. But if you have range within your style, you are then open and available and uh, up for more kinds of book deals. So mm. that's cool. Zoe, I have a, a question. More questions. Are you... Also, can we just say Louise is here? Hi, Lou. Yay, Louise. Mm. Our customer service person and and the and who manages the classroom you will be in a private classroom on the website you log in and it's just for us kids and everything is neat and organized okay um phil d'angelo okay <laughs> so we, you know this maybe we repeated this but i, I have why an agent sh uh, why an artist should take the course why sh or is that just redundant or you can oh, no. why we it's love not redundant. I have a really good reason to talk about that, actually. I think one of the hardest things when we're working, I'm freelance and I am a freelance art director and designer. Um, and, you know, I would drift like mad if it wasn't for the fact that my clients put deadlines down. And one of the things that um, the course offers is a deadline. Every week you have a deadline. And we really encourage you to meet that deadline. Um, it's exactly, Talia says, deadlines and accountability. It's, it's so important. You will push your work forward and develop so much in the five weeks. You'll be really surprised. You'll be tired, but you'll be so surprised with yourself. And I feel like um, you will learn something new either things that you never realized you could do and that you can do them, things that you might, like a medium that you've never tried, you'll learn from the students around you. So reasons to do this course that I can make a great big long list, um, apart from the obvious of building characters in your portfolio, accountability, an amazing behind the scenes Facebook group of students that are so supportive. You share information, you share ways of working, you grow from each other information from Lilla and I we've got really cool interviews coming this year um, any students that have taken the course previously um, just to know that we've got a little bit of new content from me where I've gone and interviewed um, some people so we've got some new Q&A's industry professionals and artists um, there's a new book list lurking from me so we've got some new content coming into the classroom it's just a really great five weeks. What a way to spend five weeks with like-minded people doing what you love. I love that. I love, is she great? Don't you know? Okay. <laughs> I um, didn't come with any questions for you. Goodness uh, me. You already, you, you know, I, that's okay. But um, I, I have a fun thing we're going to do. We're going to work. Oh, I have a question. Yes, darling. Jenny has put in the thing. I also should also mention that your work won't be assessed, but it may be selected for a weekly review. Lilla, please, can you talk to us about the weekly reviews? Yes, I can. Um, I'll have some tea. Okay. So here's how it goes. It's five weeks. Every week, we give you a little mini assignment to ease you in. Then you get the big assignment and you have till the weekend to do the piece and put it in our private gallery. Then Zoe and I obsess the gallery and look through. We independently pick a few of the top pieces in our- We, pick, we pick about 200 to start with. Oh, we do. Yeah, we pick- And then lot. we talk. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not 200. And then we narrow it down, narrow it down. And then we pick a handful to review. Well, why can't you review every piece, Lil and Zoe? Because we are here to teach you and the way to learn is we use a great piece to illustrate contrast or character and emotion or the eyebrows or the use of shadows or how the reader is led around the, you know, a million different things. So that's what we do. Do we wish we could review everybody? No, we do not because we would be exhausted. And so yeah. <laughs> you thought I was going to say yes, right? So so that's what we do and and my i've been teaching my whole life and i here's what i do because it's so selective it's an honor to get in the review so what happens our students work like crazy 
to do their best work to get in the review. You mm-hmm. want to get in the review. You want to get reviewed. So you work really hard. And it's a great motivational <laughs> device. What Erica are they says, inside a tip, Zoe loves a good shadow. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, you should just write that at the top of your work every week, shadows. Um, Lolo, I think the other thing I'd like to add to that is one of the hardest bits about being an independent artist, whether you are a writer, painter, illustrator, is how to review and evaluate your own work. And it's so important. It's very difficult for all of us. You feel, um, it, it, you just, I don't know. So you you can go, go so many different ways. But for me personally, I always feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready. Um, is it any good? And the thing about um, what we do in the gallery, I think it is an honor to get into the review, but at the end of each weekly review, we do give you a checklist of top things that you can go and look at your own piece of work, ideas for you to apply to your piece of work, questions to ask yourself based on the review that Lilla and I have given. And it tells you, it teaches you hopefully to begin that process of being able to appraise your own work without having someone else do it for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I want to say this. Yes, I'm a mean, strict teacher. No, not really. And we pick top pieces, but we also pick five random pieces each week. Random picks. So anyone has a chance. I pick a number in my head. I count down the rows. 25, 26, 27. And I pick those five and I put them in the PowerPoint. So that way everyone gets a chance. So it's both... um, so it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a chance element. Okay, so we are going to workshop a piece of text, and this is a text from one of Zoe's texts, a piece of text from one of Zoe's texts. Zoe, I picked this. Um, Flory is an adult, and Waffle is the dog. Do you want to? Do you have this? Do you want to read it? Just looking to see. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Let me read it. Okay. <laughs> Waffle and Flory lived a dreamy life. Every day, they went to the park for coffee and sat and watched the world go by. She scratched behind his ears and he wagged his tail. She read the paper and he snoozed in the sun. Nothing was too much. It was predictable and Waffle thought it was perfect. But one day, everything changed. Thank you. So what I want you to do, we're going to give you a few minutes. I want you to get out a piece of paper or journal or uh, scribble down or type in the chat, however you want. You can sketch or you can write words. So what came to mind? Type in what came to mind. <gasps> Sue says Paris Cafe. What Sue has done there is not just picked your basic park but a specific location and so forth. Uh, worry that everything changes. Tali is thinking of the emotion, the emotional content. Um, that's because of Zoe's French look, says British Jenny. So think about the visual, the location. Are there swings in the park or a seesaw? Is it vintage? Is it modern? Is it your neighborhood? Is it somewhere else? Is it a country? Is it country? Is it city? Nyla says soft, warm socks, easy Sunday mornings. Beautiful. Is it brownstones like in Brooklyn? Are there shops, funny little houses on the street? Is it made up? Is it some kooky non-world place? Is it another planet? You're the artist, you know? Um, Number two, I want you to think about. So type in, type in the visual. What visual are you seeing? So I feel free to shout out any I want everybody to type in something gets you warmed up Brooklyn Brown oh, so- misty sunny morning mm-hmm. a terrace in Paris mm-hmm. uh, a sunroom filled with sunlight mm. vignettes warm golden light pastel colors and soft furniture I saw a, a dog in sunglasses yes. I love it. And that's what we're going to get to next. How do you show that it's dreamy? Mm. So writes that, oh, do you use the word dreamy? I um, do. Yeah. How do you show that it's dreamy? What can you add to the postures of the characters or the expressions or the accessories? 
and how that person just said the sunglasses yeah what's the pose of your character what are they doing are they sitting up like this with their eyes Mm -hmm. wide like this yeah I mean one question is what kind of dog is waffle I mean this is where the fun is for me because you guys can do any dog you want and if you do choose the story I would say you've got two characters two dog characters they don't have to be the same so you can really play with that uh, contrast I love it Good, Ooh, good. I don't know what a golden doodle is. Is that a golden retriever and a poodle? A golden doodle. Very what? popular over here. Oh my goodness. Oh, we like a cockapoo. Oh, cockapoo, yeah. Okay, let's see. Now we're going to um the team wants me to go to this, the website. Ooh. I want to show you how to look at this who's that crazy woman um so when you go here you look so beautiful oh oh oh, look at these picture books uh so you go here to courses you see this you go illustrating children's books this is obviously the make art that sells website and you see all the good stuff here's what you get oh my god you get so much i'm not going to read it all but you get a ton you get a ton and zoe got all i mean um british jenny got all these great facts for us revenue from children's book sales is booming consistently hitting over two billion dollars us here's more of what you get lots of stuff um and then if you go over here contents Oh, look at this illustration. Look at this. So look at the side character and it look relaxation. This is like what mm. this is from Zoe's story. And then it shows you what you get in each week, what we focus on character, emotions, poses, environment, and the cover. You must have character, emotions, poses, and a big spread in your portfolio to get the gig. So, and here's what we'll teach you. And here's Oh my God, there's so much stuff. Bullet point point central. Then I want you to see this because I love this. I like a schedule. I like to know what's coming up and what I can relax about because we're going to deal with it next week. For instance, as a student, I like to know this. So here you see week one and all the stuff you get. And it's pretty much the same structure each week. No, it is the same structure each week so you get um your killer pitch all kinds of good downloads and videos and then drawing development with me on tuesday wednesday portfolio building q a roundup thursday is getting known friday's little is corner about biz or motion saturday is uh sunday your assignment is due and then on mondays of each week is the review of the assignment oh talia says i'm shaking i need this it's so well laid out and clean yes it's really organized i'm a triple capricorn so um i like things organized and the team is amazing phil d'angelo also known as uh says if you are on the fence about signing up this course is like a master's course. You get way more than your money's worth and it raises your personal bar. Highly recommend. And Erica Root agrees with Phil slash Greg. And Erica Root is one of my artists. I did not pay her to say that. Okay, so that's it. Test, oh, is this course for me? You can read all about why it is, or maybe it isn't. I don't know. Look at all these testimonials. Look at this. How beautiful you can read about that. And then we have success stories. Not only is did I find Maru oh. in class, but she's now one of my artists. Uh, so you can read how people got gigs. And there's way, way more pe- success stories than we even have here. FAQs and TNC, whatever that is. I don't know. Terms and conditions. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so class starts Monday. This Monday, you and we don't do it again till a year from now. So let's see. Fat, give fabulous character doc in chat. Okay, can we? <laughs> I have so much. This is like the biggest Zoom. It's so complicated. There's so much. Fabulous characters. I'm going to give you, um, the team is going to put this in the chat and you can download this. Look at this. Fabulous characters and what makes it special. Look at this. So this is going to help you. This is going to help you develop your characters. Uh, so let's see. Whoa, it's jumping. What's so you're going to take a book you love and you're going to analyze it. What's a good way to figure out what a great book is? You don't just look and say, Oh, I love this. You dig deep, you analyze, you pick at it, you find, well, who illustrated it? Who wrote it? Start easy. Then we go uh, go through every page and check, check off all the poses that you spot the character in, walking, running, jumping, and so forth. Because Zoe Tucker, top children's book art director, always reminds us to get the main character moving. And it's never been more so than today, the, these days, because we just had a bunch of art directors meet us at, the, at my agency to um, do speeds zoom dating with my artists and they over and over said it's about the motion the movement because kids are growing up now with animation with video they see movement so that's why it's important so here we go lots of good stuff everybody download it it's free why not so there you go thank you rebecca all right so i gave that out when you sign up you get Boom, you can sign up right now and get this. You can get all this. Your first daily drawing prompt. <laughs> you get to read over the three exclusive texts by Zoe Tucker. You get to choose the text with the choose, text chooser, which you saw. You get to join the most supportive Facebook community. You get to prepare for your first assignment on Wednesday. You're going to get exercises. Oh, Corey signed up. Yay. You get your art in front of art agent and commissioning art director, Zoe Tucker. And as I said, we have this year, Tracy Shaw, hot shot from Little Brown. I think she's Little Brown. Um, live reviews. It's you, a chance of getting your art reviewed by Lilla and Zoe. Matt's prep. Don't forget Matt's preps uh, are on the blog and you can get started with that now if you haven't already and what what are you sorry about british jenny she says sorry what oh i don't think i'm not an admin oh okay I, that's some i don't know what's going on registration closes on thursday absolutely 100 percent closes and will not run again to 2024 don't wait till thursday though i don't want you getting behind do it today please i do, i i don't don't set yourself up for anything but success. So, Zoe, do you have the script? Do you want to read a testimonial? I, have the te I have the testimony in front of me. Oh, um, oh, I'm going to read it. I'm probably going to blush now. Uh, mm -hmm. I highly recommend this course to anyone that has ever wanted to illustrate children's books. This class is full of great information. I could not get over the depth and wealth of knowledge that is so generously given. I think what I appreciated the most is the love and support from Lilla, Zoe, and all the other artists. Mm -hmm. As a creative person, I feel vulnerable putting myself out into the world, but Lilla creates a safe environment to do so. That is from Jodie Bogart. That is so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I was always called overly sensitive i'm not anymore but i was when i'm young when i was young and i'm sure a lot of you got that too right so so sensitive right i think she hits on a word that's like feeling vulnerable putting yourself out there but 
um, it's such a fun space that hopefully that takes some of that vulnerability away. Um, Lydia loves my nail color. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia. Okay, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to do the giveaway. But first, Ooh. let's do the poll. The poll, the poll. Have you ever taken a maths course before? 63% have. That's fabulous. We do get a lot of our maths fans in these Zooms, and we do love having you show up. It's very comforting for us. Uh, what is your background? Let's see. 44% uh, are working illustrators, artists, but want to level up, want to do even better. That's fabulous. 32% are interested in switching from your non-art job to an art career. 23% love to take art courses for personal enrichment. Uh, I just like taking Lilith's courses. Thank you, people. It means a lot. And what else? And lot, and then all the others in various orders. Are you signed up for the course? We have forty nine percent of you are as of the beginning of this, but I bet, I bet we converted more of you, and I hope so because it's, it's, it really is one of our most popular courses, if not the. It's just so good, and it, picture books are where it's at. We assign so many. Okay, giveaway. Time for the giveaway. Here's we how have to explain works. how it works. You, yes, we do. Explain. I'm going to say a category. Drum roll. I'm I'm waiting for you, Greg. Come on, Greg. Is everybody ready? Here's a, your chartreuse. No, you can guess as often as you want, as many times as you want. We have a lot of people in here, so the chat is going to go very fast. You put your answer in the chat, as I said, as many times as you want. <laughs> People are guessing from previous things. Kim in the background, I and Zoe will be looking to find the answer. We've It's the first one that we find. It may not be the actual first. You get what you get and you don't get upset. Sippy cups, the tension home, rotunda, rotunda. Oh my God, I love you, Ginger. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Keep going, people. Marzipan pears. I, we didn't even do it. It hasn't game. started yet. This no, is hasn't no started. panic. It hasn't started <laughs> I, yet. Everyone, I everyone, in sunglasses. Just take a breath. <laughs> Ice cream and sunglasses. Oh my, oh my God. goodness. Just calm okay. yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Three quarter sleeves, gold. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, line gate. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is too good. Luck. Good luck, people. <laughs> okay. It bifocals. A type of character. Oh. Inner tra interplanetary trans. <gasps> oh, 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 I saw it. 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 Oh, we all saw it. <laughs> Tara Lodgeco. Alien. Very good. Alien. Wow, that was fast. I was God, that was good. That was good. Oh, Giovanna got it later. Okay. okay. Oh, and Jerry and Jane. Oh, a lot of aliens. Look at that. There's so many. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what you do is write to... Hello at makeartthatsells.com. Say that you picked Alien. You won the giveaway and you get a free course illustrating children's book. Yay. The universe wants you to do this. That's all I can say. So you can do it. You can do it. And anybody who's feeling a little um, nervous or scared and excited, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. Oh, can you just remind us who won, please? I for do you remember Kim? Oh boy. Kim says Tara.
It's Tara, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Uh, Lodgeco or Loiko. Yeah. L -O thank you. Louise confirms it as well. Tara Loco. Oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> There's only one winner. Yeah. Yeah, it's the one we see first again. Oh, and she says she never wins anything. Well, you do now. <laughs> oh, because I only think Spanish words. I know. We try to get something that's not too... Uh, American centric or or English centric, but you know, okay, people, this was wonderful. Oh, we have Q and A. Mm. We have Q and A. We have Q and A. Okay, stick around for the Q and A. Um. So Zoe, you want to take your hand? I mean, okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna whistle through. We've got a few. Is the PowerPoint going to be available after the call? Is it? No, I don't think it is on this one. But when you're in the classroom, you can download the PowerPoint, which will have all of the feedback. Um, that little sheet I was telling you about at the end, which gives you a checklist. So I'm not sure this one is available. Should we should? Um, okay. Team, can we make the PowerPoint available somehow? You know, you could put it in the um, in the classroom. But I think also it would be great to put in the what do you call uh, the sales pages so people can see what you, oh, it might be what's, well, you can, you know, get rid of anything that's just appropriate to the Zoom. I we mean, will just, post the replay. Oh, so Chris Perry also asks, is this recorded? I've missed the start time. And so Louise and Jenny have confirmed that this will be replayed and it will be available tomorrow okay. on the Matt's blog. On Matt's blog on makeartthatsells.com and then click blog on the top. Great. Uh, Laura McDonald, does the ghost have a name or can we make one up? You can totally make a ghost name up. I wrote the story from the first person, I think. So it's the voice of the ghost the whole way through. So no, I didn't give the ghostling a name. You can have fun with that. Um... Susan Stevenson asked, could you share who was the artist? I think you mean who inspired me for Aaron and the Bear. Um, I think his handle is something like the boy Frost. But essentially, he just did some work in um, the Lofoten Islands. He made these beautiful little videos and took some film. And it's just really sweet. So, yeah. But you could be inspired by, if you just Google that area of the world, you can be inspired by that landscape from from the power of Google. Um, Ashwa, oh yes. Lisa in the chat says um, the name for the ghost. She says, Patrick. <laughs> I love it. Patrick and Barbara, I mean, does it get much better? <laughs> um, Ashwarya, I hope I've said your name right. Uh, how to illustrate engaging rich scenes and stories for your portfolio when you're primarily an artist and not a writer. I'm not sure I understand the question, but do you mean how do you illustrate? If you do, we're going to walk you through that in the class. So um, we spend week one designing your character, week two bringing expression into the character, facial expressions. Week three is poses, bringing the character to life, moving them around the page. Week four, you put them in a world which you create. So the background, get the setting. And then week five, we look at cover design. So we do give you all of those tips. You don't need to write because I've given you the stories. It's not a writing class, just illustrating. I do a writing class next year. Okay. Uh, Lily says... Love the three texts, thank you very much, but I am tempted by the one of the two dogs. And I wonder if Florrie should be de depicted as a grown-up or as a child. Well, that's a really good question. I had written it picturing her as a grown-up simply because they live in Florrie's house and they go for coffee. But um, if you want to use it as a vehicle to draw a child, you can, uh, not really too fixed on it. It's your portfolio. Yeah. You can break uh, a few rules. <laughs> oh, Tracy, this is really specific. Tracy asked, how big is the spread? Tracy, 
You're just going to have to measure your book. Just go look at a book, but we're going to yeah. give all of that in the course. We'll leave yeah. some questions for the course. Yeah, so we'll give you those specifics. Um, scroll the questions. Sorry? Did you scroll the Q&A? Oh, I know. Um, I'm going to, I'll try and go quick. Oh, Annie, do. Northern Bird is here. Oh, so nice. Um, oh, I'll answer that question at the end, Annie. Um, Robin, uh, it's my first maths class. Great, welcome. And I'm not an experienced illustrator. Still picking up skills and experimenting. Would you say it's better to go for something you're comfortable drawing or to really push yourself? I think this is a hard five weeks. I think I'm so pleased you're here. I think it's going to be great. I would work with something that at this stage you feel comfortable drawing because after the class, you can go and push yourself. But the five weeks is it's quick and intense. So go for something you feel good and comfy with. Mm -hmm. Lola, would you agree? I love that. And, you know, you can change as you go. You can put yourself within the course or if you're pushing too hard and you feel too anxious, pull back, go to comfort, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip over Annie, but I'm coming back. Chris, I already signed up. Can I see the text now? Jenny and uh, behind the scenes team, I'm pretty sure once you've signed up, you get access to the text. Can you confirm that? That would be great. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thanks, guys. Phil D'Angelo, yes. <laughs> Rebecca Kim, in the publishing world are picture books that are illustrated and written by the same person picked up more often. Uh, no, it's completely uh, mixed. I've shown you books today that are author illustrated. So this is written and uh, illustrated by the same person, Beth and Stevens. But I've also shown you two that are separate authors and separate illustrators. So um, it can be either. Uh, just great skills. If you want to write, that's fantastic. Lilla's got a writing class that will, can help you flesh out your story idea, which is running next year. It's going to be easier to to get an illustration gig than illustration and authoring. So you want to definitely have illustration work in your portfolio to get that kind of work. Yeah. And then involve the other. Okay. Uh, Jennifer says, I took this course the first time it was offered. How has it changed since then? Or has it? Uh, well, Jennifer, it's great that you asked that question because yes, uh, the main content of the course is the same, but we have updated elements of it. Like we've got new Q&As, new texts, and uh, mm -hmm. new yes. input, book input from me. Uh, we, uh, so the Q&A is new interviews with authors and art directors. We have, uh, of course, the review, the texts are always different. The art is always different and the reviews are always different and, and very con they're, they're contemporaneous. So we might show, you know, when you illustrate uh, maybe the art you do, this just came in art by one of my artists. And, you know, you don't know what other kind of work you're going to get for your picture book illustrations, uh -huh. for example. Yeah. So, you know, we might show you things, might show you this book by my illustrator that she did or one that mm -hmm. I just purchased, like this beauty. Yeah, uh, I agree with that, Lilla. I think what we're talking about in the lives is the content that changes all the time. And the pile of books that I have here to show and to talk about this time around are things that you haven't seen before. Uh, Rosie, I am an illustrator, but I want to start writing my own stories. I have a few ideas for stories, but I'm not sure how to turn them into a manuscript. What's your advice for a beginner? First of all, Rosie, if you're thinking about doing this course, I think it's great. Like Lilla said, um, if you're an illustrator already and you want to get into children's books, your first step is to build a portfolio full of children's book work. And that's, that's what great. this course will do. Within that, once you start finding your feet with that illustration, those ideas that you have for your own stories are just going to grow and grow. And then, like Lilla said, we do have a course next year that is a writing course, which will help you build that writing uh, style out. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
it's almost one o'clock for me guys <laughs> um it's always nap time for Lilla by the looks of it <laughs> uh Tara okay I'm uh, as quick as I'm answering them you're adding more so I'm gonna answer skip, you can skip some too I'm gonna try I, and answer absolutely. five more let's say okay. um, and I'll answer two. Oh, do you want to do some you do some I'll drink water I've run out okay. of tea okay um I'm just gonna go freaking random um let's see um 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 who just asked is there what did I just say uh can well, Sandra says Sandra Atima can I do this course next to a full-time job absolutely we have many students that are working full-time you do what you can you don't watch shows at night as much maybe you pick Tuesday nights and Saturday mornings to do your work okay maybe in, on your commute you you watch the video or download the, the thing. Um, Laura McDonald, what if you're not very good at drawing people, but you can draw animals and objects? How can you get good at drawing people? There's so many how-to books on how to draw people, um, like these little workbooks and so forth. But the other thing is you can just, what is a person, okay? A circle, two eyes, eyebrows, nostrils, maybe a nose shape, mouth, you look at pictures of children, shoulders. You can take my, oh yeah, of course. Why did I make this, the course? Um, what's it called? Drawing faces. Drawing faces, instantly downloadable, not expensive. I made it and I have a whole component on drawing children because I did that as an illustrator and I did it in a way that I drew my care, my children in a stylized way not realistic in with rendering and shading and shadow although I can do that I was classically trained but I did a style that was loose so you can totally do it it's very easy you, you see so many books where the face is very simple um I'm going to just show no two examples oh yeah look we're holding up books See that people look at this James Yang. I love him. Look oh yeah. This. Love that book. It's beautiful. You get a real sense of emotion. The leaning Zoe loves the leaning. I'm sure mm -hmm. the reaching and it's very graphically designed this mm -hmm. child. Okay. Well, let me do one more. Who asked? Is it uh, Tracy? Yes. Keep focused on the five-year-old your your children should be five years old more or less that you draw but somebody asked what can I do this weekend to get ready I would just um oh yeah Kashani hey Lil and Zoe any homework you'd suggest over the weekend prepare for course looking oh, forward to do your laundry and do your cooking yeah stock up the fridge charity says Matt's prep um and just start going through <laughs> everything that we already give you yeah the math mats prep mats mm. prep is on go to make art that sales.com click on the blog and it should all be there you can work on that go to the a children's bookstore or library go look at books and get yourself like bubbling with excitement mm. okay zoe i'm done your turn okay um oh, let's see oh wait a minute Sorry, while you're looking, I shade. Is that bad for kids' books? My style is a bit sculpted. No, that's fine. I, I don't, you know, don't. I'm not saying that shading and, and rendering is bad. If you're not capable of it, you can do a style that's more graphic. But if you are, if you shade, that's great. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, it's a couple of technical ones here. Lana says, how long after the course recorded Zoom sessions will be available to view? So I'm going to turn to Becky and um, Louise for that information. And Giovanna, Giovanna asks, um, thank you for the text chooser. Where might we get a copy? I heard you mention that will be in the classroom. And there was also a download link in the chat. Um, perhaps one of the team can pop that up once more um, if we need that. Uh, is there a market for a realistic kind of classic children's book 
I love illustrating animals with watercolors and digital. I love adding details to my work. Manvi, that sounds great. Yes. In fact, right now, um, I've been in conversations with one publisher that I'm working for, particularly looking for classic, a classic style. I think one of the things we talk about in the class is to go and look at um, bookshops, obviously looking in the library, but it's so important to actually go and spend time in a bookshop. You don't have to buy, but spending time in the bookshop is always, it's inspiring, but it's also educational. I do it probably not as much as I should, but recently I have been doing it probably every couple of weeks. We tend to go and visit as a team. So I might go with different publishers and we just look at what's on the shelves. And that's really important because you'll see classic books. There'll be the books that we grew up with, like Shel Silverstein or Judith Carr, things that are from our childhood. But what's really important is to look at the contemporary books that are being commissioned, because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for work in that market. And it's misrepresentative to think about, say, Beatrix Potter as a viable style now, today. It's loved, it's cherished, and it's what we call an evergreen. So it's always in the shops. But you want to look at what's out there and what's new and then try and bring your work, bring your style up in line with that. Beautifully put. It's really true. You don't want to do something that was published 10, 20, 30 years ago. You want to do something that's, you need to stay hip to what's being done now. What are art directors looking for? You know, and, 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 and lead trend. Lead, you do, just do you, what you love. Just evolve it, develop it, and, and yeah. don't worry about, you know, if it's trend, but at the same time, that said, see what's being currently published. Yeah, I think one thing I see, which I, it is often, it's a point of breakthrough for new artists moving, like taking their work into that professional level, is when somebody is drawing perhaps more classically or more tentatively. And this class does help you push beyond that because you start to see in the gallery and the gallery is a great tool. It's a great tool for me. It's a great tool for Lilla, but it's a bit like a bookshop. You see all your artwork with everyone else's. And if you're working in a style that's maybe softer, it pushes you to, to get your work to shout loud with everyone else's. I hope that makes some kind of sense. It's, um, it's hard to describe, but we do talk about it in class. It is something that comes up and we're with you and we're here to help you get your work into that space. Uh, just before the chat runs away, Becky has very kindly put in the uh, character document and the text choose it again. So if you want to grab those and download them, uh, it's just there at, well, the time for me is 6.16. So scroll away on the chat and find that. Um, okay, Lila, I'm going to answer a couple more and then what do you think? You said something that made me think. Um... Oh, I do. I have something else to say about style. If you're yeah. someone who works traditionally or digitally, we're here for all of it. So uh, there's no rules on how you work, what medium oh, um, you use. Right, right. Yeah. Phil D'Angelo has something to say in the chat. Um, Phil D'Angelo reminds me of um, Colin Robinson. Who knows who Colin Robinson Phil D'Angelo, it sounds like Colin Robinson. He says, my last pitch, if you're thinking about signing up, the public live Zoom is a really great example of the experience you will have with the Matt's course, such real purposeful inform informational giving. It's true. <laughs> Becky says, I don't know about anyone else, but quick, will forever be Phil D'Angelo. Um, <laughs> yes, what we do behind the shadows. Yeah. The oh, do you know, one of my favorite bits of the class, Lilla, is the conversations you and I have around the work but also around the things that we bring in to talk about. And, and, you know, we do say we're just two people in this industry. It's going to be great having Tracy Shaw coming in as well, bringing that like a third voice into the conversation. But we just discuss our opinions, our feelings about it. We are both actively commissioning professionals within the industry. So we're valid, but you know, the, we're not, we're not the gospel. I mean, I, I mean, I think I am the gospel, no, but. We're we, pretty here's good. What I say. We know a lot. We've been in the business a long time. Ooh, we, we added the lot, but we don't know everything. And you need to pick and choose. And by the way, Phil is not on commission, Robin. <laughs> He's just a super fan. We love him. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, um, somebody, oh, bless them, says, is there a discount code? We've missed the 30% off. Um, I don't know if there is. I'm sorry. I would have said for sure. Yeah. Um, Sandra, uh, it sounds like an intense course. Can I do it next to my full-time job? Yes. And Lydia answered this beautifully in the chat earlier. She said she's managed it with a full-time job, a kid and a husband. Lydia, I feel like your husband should be doing more. <laughs> But that's, uh, you can, if you have two hours a week, great. If you have 10 hours a week, great, you can do it. And if you are somebody who's maybe done the course once, I'd be really interested if there are people here on the chat that have done it more than once, because my understanding is the second time you do it, you take even more away with it. It's like another layer peels away in the five weeks. So um, yeah. It's, oh, it gets better each time. That makes me feel good. Thank you. Oh, and I, we see the improvement. So you know how we see students who have taken it over and over just get better and better. And a lot of times I will want to take on an artist. I look at them, but I'm like, I need to see more. I need to see the trajectory. I loved what they did in this class, but I, I hope they take it again and develop further. And till I can I can't not take them like they're just so flipping good so yeah it yeah. I mean that's like anything else you don't get good at something in a second you have to work at it but this yeah. sets you up for success and if you can only read the downloadables and do you know you can't watch every zoom you can't do everything it's there for you for months after uh but just do the assignment each week the drawing yeah do that yeah. enjoy the drawing that's the thing just get like lose yourself in that tara asks me a question about the giggling ghost character which i will just answer do you recommend the portrayal of the giggling ghost character lean towards a more abstract representation or would it be appropriate to depict them as a child ghost i am uncertain whether a more childlike depiction could be too frightening for the target age group i agree actually i think it depends on how you draw um what your style is I think having a ghostly like if your style is super realistic having a ghostly child could look like we're suddenly entering into a death book so I'm like maybe a bit too dark the tone of the text is funny and silly and it's about giggling so I would say you could go like um if you were thinking like human form wasn't Casper like a human form ghost Casper the friendly ghost can anyone remember that Yes. Yes. Or you could have the classic sheet shape or, you know, you can vary that. But I would remember your audience is a five year old. So you want it to be fun, light, humorful. Is that word humorful? God, it's definitely wine time for me, isn't yes, it? Yeah. <laughs> check out Leo by Christian Robinson. Thank you, Nikki O'Donnell. Yeah. It's a great one who yeah. does an abstract, who does a ghost child wonderfully. Yeah, uh, Oliver Jeffers also. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a lot of fun with it. You don't have to just have a sheet wearing ghost. But um, yeah, I think a ghostly looking child is too far. I did do a book actually last year called The Baddies, um, which is, for any UK folks, it was the Axel Scheffler and Julia Donaldson uh, book from last year. And we have a ghost that um, he was an adult ghost that haunts through the walls of the house. And we really had to work hard to make, we wanted it to be, uh, to look like a ghostly figure, but we wanted it also to not be utterly terrifying. So we did have Axel do several versions for that to make sure it was on the right side of it. Hmm. Beautiful. Good. Do you think we're done? For I do, I'm gonna answer Annie's question now. Annie okay. asks, have you got any more books being published soon? And I haven't, but that's because having a little bit of a break, I uh, it just felt very uh, burnt out uh, last year. So it's been really nice to write for ICB and um, get my writing legs back again, but I've just had a bit of a break. As well-deserved, I mean, a bit of a Thank break you. from writing your own books. Yeah. Teach this course, you are direct a bajillion books you know, you do, you're so busy with a million things. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Zoe, so much. You know, I just, I loved hearing so many of your answers today. I can never get enough. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank the student, the, the viewers today. 
for amusing me, getting some belly laughs out of me, asking really great questions, just being your typical fabulous self. And mm -hmm. I, I, I say this every time, but I mean it. It's an honor for me to teach you. It's an honor. I am I have the coolest, smartest, most talented students. I love you so much. I get to teach you. It's a gift. Thank you. I cannot wait for Monday. Make sure you go sign up so you can get started and be ready for Monday. You can already get working on things. Monday is the date, says Chris Perry. Good. I love this community so much, says Bridget. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Zoe, uh, any final words? Just uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been really lovely. And I hope I get to see you all in class. I can't wait. Thank you. Okay, see you Monday. Yeah, see you Monday, everyone. Bye. Bye.